We've got a unique spin on an oil filter wrench. This is the JM3 oil filter wrench. We saw this at SEMA this year. Actually, we saw it on social media a little bit before and then actually came across uh, them at a booth at SEMA and we wanted to see, hey, what's this thing all about? So it's a pretty cool oil filter wrench that is manufactured right here in the US. In fact, the owner of the company, we met him, really great guy, and he actually manufactures all these uh, by hand, not him, he himself, but his small team. They powder coat them, everything, right there in their facility at JM3. But the question is, does it really work? Because there's a lot of skeptics out there. And let's uh, take a closer look, and then we'll dive in and actually use this, and we'll talk about some of the skepticism that's out there, and then we'll see, does it truly work? By the way, if you haven't done so already, take a look at our Christmas gift guide, which the JM3 oil filter wrench is a part of. We've got a bunch of cool gifts that may give you some ideas, or maybe you can uh, let somebody else know the ideas that you have in mind for yourself. Well, just a couple of weeks ago, when we were at the SEMA show in Las Vegas, we came across the JM3 oil filter wrench. Now, we'd seen this on social media. I think we saw it on Instagram and TikTok, and we came by the booth talked to the uh, to the owner that that actually invented these and uh, just a really cool guy really nice guy had a couple of legit mechanics that were there in the booth helping him talking about how like, they love this and it's it's a bit of an odd tool I, I must say and it looks uh, gimmicky is probably not the right word but you know what I'm saying it has a look to say is it really going to work and there's a lot of skeptics out there because we posted it we used it there at the show and said you know what this thing actually works and but man did the skepticism come out and all the negative comments and that's not going to work and try that on a titan filter and try that on the ls and try that on this and that and the other and you know what i said ship me one of these and uh, and let's let's uh let's actually do a review on it so here we are so here we have an ls uh oil pan that has the oil filter adapter on it uh, we're going to screw on an oil filter and we'll tighten it to spec and then we'll tighten a little more and a little more and a little more and I think you, you get the understanding here is we're gonna see, will it still work to take it off? So really cool design, very simplistic de design. As you can see here, the inside is what turns. So basically kind of have a three piece material here. Really it's made out of just two. I think it's kind of butterflied open and probably cut from a CNC sheet or cut on a CNC from a sheet of a material. And then the center section has these teeth uh, that actually matches up with the oil filter. So as you see this, uh, this AC Delco right here, if we put this on here, you can see that's what actually engages the flats of that oil filter from that center ring there. And the difference is you're not actually turning the tool. All you're doing is squeezing. So the question is, can the torque really be produced from just squeezing that trigger versus actually wrenching on something. And that's what we're going to find out. Now this is an early model LS, probably a 03, 60, I believe. And so that's gonna take, the 48 is gonna be the later model. So it's a, a larger thread here. So the earlier model is the PF46. And that's what we'll use. And by the way, since when did AC Delco start putting different languages on the box? It looked like a totally different box, different GM logo. So that was kind of interesting anyway. We're gonna screw on the PF46. We'll put an indexing mark on it and get started. Real quick before we get started, uh, let's look at uh, what the recommendations are for oil filters. Typically, if you look on your oil filter, it will actually show you a picture. As you see right here, it says basically it's hand tight or not hand tight, actually till the rubber gasket touches. Make sure you lube that gasket, by the way. I don't think I'm talking to beginners. And then three quarters of a turn. Usually you can get that with your hand. If you're having to get your oil filter wrench to tighten it, you're probably going too tight. Anyway, so AC Delco says three quarters of a turn. I think Mobile One says the same. Usually it's either on the oil filter box or many times on the oil filter. Uh, yeah, so plus three quarters of a turn, same thing. So bring it till it touches the gasket and then three quarters of a turn. Uh, AC Delco, we know what that is. And then this is the Motorcraft and there, there it is on the box. I think it's on the filter too. And it says three quarters to one turn. I believe Pure Later is the same. I think they say three quarters. So basically, usually it's three quarters of a turn to one turn. I have seen half a turn as well. So let's just say it's somewhere between a half and one turn. So we're gonna at least take it that far. 
uh, to start with, and then we'll move from there. All right, before we get started, let's make sure this is the uh, PF46. Yes, it is. Let's make sure it screws on. Yep, that looks to be correct. A little motor oil. Oh my goodness, did I just do something wrong? Oh my, I just put motorcycle oil on my automotive oil filter. I think I may have to burn that. Man, if you want to start some comments, just talk about oil filters and oil on forums. People just go insane. Anyway, so a little lube there on the gasket. And so we're, we're going to take it. And so there it's touching right there. Make sure we're engaging good. Okay, so we'll call it right there. So let's make us an indexing mark. And we'll just call it straight on so you can kind of see it with the camera. Really not pointing at anything, but I'll just put us a mark. And I hope that'll be good enough for you. So that's kind of 12 o'clock in your position. So you can see I can easily get a quarter turn with two fingers and should be able to get a half a turn with two fingers as well. Now, in the LS situation, it is hard to get up there and actually grip that and get three quarters of a turn, but I may be able to inch it around. All right, so there is three quarters of a turn. We're at the nine o'clock position as far as you are concerned. So that would be three quarters of a turn after engagement of the rubber gasket. Now I'm gonna take the JM3 and you can see it sits on here. It clears the oil pan gasket, no problem at all. You see I have plenty of area there still, so not a problem there. And then obviously we've kind of got a tight area in here and sometimes when you're dealing with four wheel drives, you can get a little tighter and that's gonna be different on. Uh, so your Camaros, your uh, SUVs, uh, all your different LS versions, um, that's going to change depending on what car we're talking about. Regardless, we have some room to move this where it's a comfortable position. And the idea here is what I'm going to do is just squeeze. I don't have to turn this. So I want to squeeze and I want to keep this area still. So I want this to remain still and squeeze like this. And so the tool is kind of got to remain in place and just that inner ring and the oil filter is going to spin. So I can go here and I'm just going to make sure that this stays still so I can kind of show you the action here and squeeze. Very moderate pressure to get that to go, no problem at all. Now if I just release, it's gonna to wanna to turn the tool so I lift it up, release, and then I can engage that. You can see how many teeth there are, it gives me a a lot of options. I don't have to move it very far to engage it once again. And again, I'll brace the tool, squeeze. So not a problem breaking this loose. And also what you can do, you can actually rest this tool against the oil pan if you wanted to and just squeeze here as well. Okay, so I don't have to actually use my hand to squeeze. I can brace that against something push on it and it's going to loosen that oil filter. And now I'm at a place where easily I can remove that. Well, so that was three quarters of a turn, okay? So now we'll go back. Now we've crushed our gasket a little bit. And so now uh, my indexing mark is no longer. So let's just call the indexing mark here at, I don't know, what's that two o'clock for your position. And so now we'll go a full return to where we go back to uh, this position right here. So now we're at about half. How you like that oldie? I like it because it's nice and smooth and it's not gonna crush my oil filter. I lied, it did crush a little bit. Okay, so there's a full turn. Ooh, I really crushed my oil filter. So there's a full turn and there's an example of why you don't need to be using an oil filter wrench to tighten your oil filters. That is a no-no for sure. But I wanted to specifically over tighten this to see if can we break this free and is it going to work on kind of a mauled up oil filter. So here we go. 
And you know what? Let me just try it by squeezing first without having to brace it. Not a problem. Not a problem at all. And you can see, even if I had to get all the way over here, still not a problem. I can get anywhere on this LS just about that feels comfortable. And as I mentioned, I could also brace it against the oil pan. So that was a full turn, even with a dented oil filter and no problem breaking that free. Now let's push it a little further because I know we got some skeptics out there. They're going to say, yeah, but, and I get it. Listen, it's kind of like breaking free lug nuts. There's no way we can replicate, you know, 20 times over that car that's come in after 10,000 miles. Nobody's removed it. It's been through, you know, different heat sinks and cold and heat and, you know, driven across the country and everything you can think of. You're just, you're never going to replicate that. So I'm not going to make everybody happy, but I hope that we can at least show you of how this tool can work. So let's take this off and we'll spin it down. And it looks like it's engaging in the, uh, again, still at that two o'clock position. So it looks like we crushed the gasket in the same spot now. So now let's go, well, let's try to go one and a half turns. I might crush the filter too much. In fact, I'm gonna go down here and do it. Okay, so there's half. And there's past to full. Hope I don't strip threads. They might be getting close. And I'm gonna call that one and a half. So that is double tight. This is twice as tight as you should be tightening an oil filter, which if you understand anything about threads and about bolt stretch, and of course we don't have bolt stretch going on, but you're more than doubling the pressure uh, on that gasket by going double uh, the amount of rotation. Anyway, I, I could get into the science, but just Trust me, believe me now, and hear me now, believe me later, whatever it was. Anyway, so now we're one and a half, turn, one and a half full turns, uh, a damaged oil filter, and I'm gonna go right here, and squeeze. Get a better bite here. Okay, it slipped, so let's brace it here against. So it looks like with the damaged oil filter, at one and a half turns, we're not able to use uh, the oil filter wrench on there. Let's just see here. Yeah, it looks like I'm crushing it for sure up there and we get the band down there which again to get that up on the truck when it's like that it's kind of a pain to be able to get down there at the base so it looks like at one and a half turns could not do it look at that we left there's an example of a problem many times and somebody had spent another oil filter on there you see what stayed on there what did not come off of the oil filter is the gasket. It is impregnated or actually stuck to the actual oil pan. So we need to take that off and make sure it comes off with your gasket. So you get a double gasket there and that's going to blow out for sure and have a major oil mess. Okay, we're back really quick because I don't think we did a fair test there at the end because we never reuse an oil filter. So once we dented this, tightening the filter with a strap wrench, a typical oil filter strap wrench, I didn't think that was fair to then make the JM3 have to try to bite on these bent places. So what would only be fair would be to grab a new oil filter. So that's what we did. And now let's redo that test. So there we're engaged. We're going to make this at 12 o'clock. So kind of straight on. Since we all already know we can do a full turn, even on a bent oil filter, we'll go ahead and we'll take this at, there's a half. There's about five eighths. 
This time we'll get down here on the bottom. Okay, there's one. We already know we can do one. Let's go ahead and try it at one and a quarter. So there we're one and a quarter. So we're spinning. It's working on at one and a quarter. And I can just ratchet this around if I want to. I don't have to just squeeze it, but I don't have to move it either. So I can use it like a regular wrench. So one and a quarter we got. Okay. Now start there. Again about five eighths. There's one quarter and there's one and a half so more than anybody pretty much double what anybody should be doing I think we're probably going to slip again but we will see yep so it looks like one and a quarter we could get at one and a half. It just doesn't seem to want to bite. Well, as you can see at a half, three quarter and full turn, there was no problem uh, getting the oil filter off using the JM3 oil filter wrench. Now, when we went to a full one and a half turns, then that's where it really got lodged and the oil filter wrench seemed to slip a little bit. But at the same time, putting a regular strap wrench on there also started really damaging the filter and denting that pretty bad. We had to go to the base, which a lot of times you don't have the ability to get up there at the base. And sometimes once the filter gets dented, as you saw when we were tightening it, which happens sometimes, then your socket wrench won't fit on there either. So we had some problems altogether outside of just the JM3 oil filter wrench, but regardless, it seemed to slip a little bit at one and a half full turns after touching on the rubber gasket. Also, let's note that that's really was more than one and a half turns because when we first crushed the gasket, there was a good, you know, from the 12 o'clock to two o'clock position where it basically crushed the gasket a little. And then from then we were starting from that two o'clock position. So to be fair, we were past that one and a half full turns after the gasket seat. So does the JM3 oil filter wrench actually work? I think it works very well and it works as they claim it does. I mean, you squeeze to provide the torque and it does a very good job of being able to break that filter free. And as you saw, I can use this to brace up against something. I don't have to put the full squeeze on it. And then I can just kind of push by hand to provide that torque to break it free. So again, quit thinking of having to twist this. You can actually brace it against something, provide that push against it, and that's what's gonna break that filter free. By the way, we also came back and did one and a quarter turns, not a problem there either. So up to one and a quarter turns, not a problem. Full one and a half turns, that's where there is gonna be a problem. But again, don't use an oil filter wrench to tighten your oil filter. If you do, just do it to get that little bit of nudge and just look on your filter and see what do they call for? Is it a half, three quarters of a turn? Provide that three quarters of a turn or whatever they state and be done with it. It's going to be fine. Make sure you put a little bit of lube on the rubber gasket so that it seats well and it spins and doesn't grab. And then also when you're taking that oil filter off, make sure you're not leaving that gasket behind. Now cost of these are gonna run you about $30 individually, but you can buy a five pack and run you about $100. So you're gonna save $10 per oil filter wrench if you buy a five pack. Now, why do you need a five pack? Well, it really depends on what filters you're running. You know, you're doing Ford Chevrolets and what types and, and typically as a mechanic, usually you're kind of, you know, in that mainstream of some type of vehicle manufacturer, some type of vehicles. A lot of your trucks are very common. So all your LS filters are gonna 
pretty much be the same, except when you go to the other brands like Mobile One is a little bit bigger than the, uh, than the AC Delco, so it's gonna be different. But you can look on the JM3 website. They've got a list of the most common filters and they'll tell you which wrenches you need. So if you do buy the five pack, then obviously you can get five different sizes in the ones that you need. They also offer different colors as well. As you can see, one of these oranges is a little bit orangier than the other. But anyway, so some cool designs here. I think a cool idea on a, an oil filter wrench. So check them out. We'll have a link in the description. Also, let us know what you think about all this. And keep track of us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and even Instagram. And by the way, this was part of our Christmas gift guide because we think this is a really cool gift to give uh, that person that loves to work on their automobiles, whether they're mechanic or not. Hey, if you don't mind, would you follow us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and even TikTok? And if you don't mind, would you hit that like and subscribe button if you haven't done so already? And by all means, if you hated our video, then give us a thumbs down. But would you let us know in the comments why? Have a Merry Christmas. Have a Happy New Year. Keep smiling.